Welcome to another episode of China Update, where I provide you guys with the most up-to-date political, economic, and geostrategic analysis on the world's number two economy. My name is Tony. Let's jump in. Okay, happy Tuesday, everybody. Before we move into the main stories for today's video, one brief economic-related development: state-run Securities Daily has just reported that Beijing will spend a total of 21.5 trillion yuan, 3.15 trillion U.S. dollars, in major public projects this year. Quote: To stabilize 2023's economic growth. End quote. Funding will come from local government budgets through the selling of bonds. The 7,652 projects quote cover diversified areas including infrastructure, artificial intelligence, information intelligence, and new materials. End quote. While regulators are hoping for a consumption boost to stabilize growth this year, 3.15 trillion U.S. dollars worth of debt financed government project spending will be there to pick up any slack. Okay, let's move into the main stories. And first up, the Chinese balloon saga continues into this week. We have already thoroughly explored the background to all this in previous videos. So let us move through the most recent relevant developments. Perhaps the biggest news is that the U.S. has shot down three more objects over North America in the last few days. It is still unclear what these were. However, the White House said that there is no evidence that the objects shot down were conducting surveillance. But、added, it could not rule out the possibility of espionage. On Monday, yesterday, a spokesperson for the Canadian Strategic Joint Staff, at a briefing to media, expressed that an object shot down on Sunday was a quote suspected balloon. End quote. Meanwhile, Beijing is seeking to hit back at the United States with a foreign ministry spokesperson, claiming that in the last year, ten U.S. balloons have flown into PRC airspace. Quote. The U.S. has for a long time abused its technological superiority to conduct large and indiscriminate eavesdropping and secret stealing operations in all parts of the world, including its allies. The U.S. is the world's largest spy and surveillance empire. End quote. Wang then listed the instances of alleged U.S. reconnaissance operations in PRC airspace. However, some of the examples given, like the South China Sea, represent disputed territory. Yesterday, U.S. National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby rejected these claims, expressing, "Quote: We're not flying surveillance balloons over China, and I'm not aware of any other craft that was flying over into Chinese airspace." End quote. Another U.S. National Security Council spokesperson made a similar rejection on Twitter the same day. Quote, Any claim that the U.S. government operates surveillance balloons over the PRC is false. This is the latest example of China scrambling to do damage control. It has repeatedly and wrongly claimed the surveillance balloon it set over the U.S. was a weather balloon, and has failed to offer any credible explanations for its intrusion into our airspace or the airspace of others. End quote. Meanwhile, UK-based Japanese-owned Financial Times writes today that Taipei officials have observed dozens of PLA military balloon flights into its airspace in recent years, many more than previously officially recognized. One unnamed senior Taiwanese official reportedly told the outlet, "Quote: They come very frequently. The last one just a few weeks ago." End quote. Adding, "Quote: Some of the balloons are fielded by the PLA Air Force." And some are the rocket force. End quote. The outlet writes again, citing unnamed Taipei officials, that the balloons have been collecting atmospheric data for use in radar and missile systems. The last development on this theme to cover is that the U.S. has blacklisted six entities it says are linked to the alleged balloon surveillance program. One of the companies is China Electronics Technology Group Corp's 48th Research Institute because of its ties to the People's Liberation Army aerospace programs. Commentators have pointed out, though, that the firm has already been hit by U.S. sanctions several times in recent years, suggesting the sanctions previously have had little effect. The U.S.-based The Wire China writes yesterday that two persons. Ulja, top aeronautics scientist, and Wang Dong are linked to four of the six sanctioned firms. The two men, the outlet writes, quote, have a complex network of companies involved in balloon and aerospace technologies, some of which are closely affiliated with the Chinese military, but are not sanctioned by the U.S. government. End quote. U.S.-based New York Times writes the same day that this Ulja. 
had actually been featured in a Chinese state-run article back in 2019, which wrote at the time how, quote, his team had launched an airship more than 60,000 feet into the air and sent it sailing around the globe, including across North America, end quote. Next up, central policy document number one, and Iran. Hey guys, if you enjoyed today's episode of China Update, as always, don't forget to hit the like button, it's a huge help. And for anyone who can go that extra mile and help me keep this channel sustainable, allow me to continue producing these episodes for you guys on YouTube every day. Or if you really just like what I'm doing and you'd like to send a small tip, Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee links are in the description below. Thank you so much, everybody, for the ongoing support. Next up, Beijing has published its so-called Central Document Number 1. As the first policy statement released by China's central authorities each year, the document is seen as an indicator of policy priorities. The document, now for a third year in a row, prioritizes rural revitalization. The document called for enhanced efforts to stabilize production and ensure supply of grain and imported agricultural products to boost the construction of agricultural infrastructure, to strengthen support for agricultural science, technology and equipment, to consolidate and expand poverty alleviation, and to promote the high-quality development of rural industries, to use the language of the document. The mention of industrialization of corn and soybean breeding using biotechnology implies that genetically modified food crops may be promoted this year. The document discusses the so-called three rural problems, that is, policy challenges around low agricultural production, poor rural areas, and impoverished farming communities. Hundreds of millions of Chinese are still rural workers with incredibly low income and very limited legal rights over the land they work. Interestingly, analysts with the state-run Securities Times pointed out that the policy document uses the term harmonious countryside in place of the previous beautiful countryside. For the first time. It is unclear what is meant by this change, but harmonious is typically associated with preventing social unrest. And finally for today's episode of China Update, China and Iran. State media and the PRC Foreign Ministry have both confirmed that, at the invitation of General Secretary Xi Jinping, the President of the Islamic Republic of Iran will pay a state visit to China from February 14th, today, to the 16th this Thursday. This is President Raisi's first visit to China, which Beijing claims is intended to facilitate, quote, planning and leading the future development of bilateral relations, end quote. In previous years, Beijing has kept Iran at arm's length. Beijing had sent Vice Premier Hu Chunhua to meet Raisi in Tehran late last year, and she didn't stop in Iran during a visit to Saudi Arabia in December, unlike a regional trip he made back in 2016. Though last year the two countries did launch a 25-year bilateral agreement designed to enable billions of dollars of investment. China is Iran's only customer of oil exports, heavily sanctioned by the United States, and thus a critical trade partner from Tehran's point of view. Beijing would like to work with the Middle Eastern country, especially as it grows closer to Moscow, but it is likely concerned about the risks cooperation would mean for its already poor relationship with the US, issues of unrest within Iran itself, as well as Beijing's interests with the Gulf states. The trip begins today. We will cover any and all salient details of the visit later this week. Okay, that is today's episode of China Update. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Have a wonderful day wherever you are, and I will see you all tomorrow.